Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Historical Markers. You know, we've been doing these for quite a while. Uh, we've gone to county after county after county, um, both in Illinois and some in Kentucky. And um, as we've gone back and looked at the records from the county we've been to, we've noticed that new markers have been added since we were there. So in this episode, we just want to cover some of those new markers that were added in places that we've previously been. So stay with us, stay tuned, and join us on this journey to find out what new history is out there that is being um, marked for us to find. Well, again, new history. I guess that's an oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> but let's go see what we can find in these counties and what's been added and what's um, going on. Stay tuned. Okay, we are here in Cairo, Illinois for this marker right here. It is the U.S. Colored Troops, African American Troops in the Civil War, United States Colored Troops, USCT. On May 22nd, 1863, the United States War Department issued General Order Number 143 to establish the proclamation which developed the Bureau of Colored Troops. African American reg Regiments as United States Colored Troops, or USCT. This division of the Union Army produced 179,000 African American men in approximately 175 regiments. In addition, 19,000 served in the Navy in Illinois. 1,811 African American men served from the, from the state. Locally, brave African American men from Cairo served in the various regiments of USCT. Special honor is given to Reverend Thomas Jefferson Houston, an ordained Baptist preacher, a conductor of the Underground Railroad, and personal assistance to General U Ulysses Grant, known affectionately as T.J. Houston, affiliated to Grant's troop in 1862. He later served as a teamster in the Battle of Corinth and became General Grant's unofficial personal bodyguard. Others who faithfully served include, and it, it has a, a lot of names here, um, Christopher Guderian, Washington Love, Henry A. Martin, Joseph Sansom, Henry Walker, Henry Williams, James Jones, Alexander Canada, Henry Minton, William Minton, William Thomas Scott. And they were all in various regiments and parts of the forces. This is pretty cool. I really like this monument. Um, it was it's a new monument. It was donated by the Brotherhood of the First Missionary Baptist Church, funded by the RSB Hastings Charitable Foundation, September 8th, 2022. Well, that's really cool. All right, we are at the Cairo Customs House in Cairo, Illinois. Um, there. It was begun uh, by the U.S. Treasury Department, began in 1867, and the building was completed in 1872. I'm pretty sure I'm going up to this plaque that's up on the wall. It says the Carroll Custom House, 1872, placed on the National Register of Historic Places. It's designated a historic custom house by the United States Customs Service Department of the Treasury in 1975. There we go. All right, we are in Cairo, Illinois, outside the Cairo Public Library. Which is a beautiful building. There we go. Get that sun blocked out of the way. Very well maintained building. We're going up here, right up to the front, to this plaque on the wall. Let's 
says the Cairo Public Library Safford Memorial Building 1883 placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Alright, we are in Cairo, Illinois outside the First Presbyterian Church. I'm looking for this plaque right here. It says the historic First Presbyterian Church, built 1894, has been placed in the National Register of Historic Places by the United States Department of the Interior. The church has fallen into disrepair. I doubt that, that there, I don't know that there are services here anymore. Um, there may be. But, uh, I don't know. We're here in Cairo, Illinois, outside the Illinois National Guard building. It's quite beautiful architecture on this building. But that's not what we're here for. <laughs> we're actually here for this flagpole. Um, it says... To the honor and glory of the sons and daughters of the city of Cairo and Alexander County who served their country in the First World War, Major General Harry L. Bolin. It's, it's really um, a, a beautiful flag. It's got a bench around it and really some really cool features. A lot of Art Deco features on the pole itself. Unfortunately, there's not a flag flying. Um, I don't know if this building is even in use anymore. There we go. Alright, we're here in Halliday Park in Cairo, Illinois. This is the statue is the Hewer. It was erected in memory of William Parker Halliday and presented to the city of Cairo, Illinois in 1906 in token of his unswerving faith in her destiny. We're here in Cairo, Illinois at the tunnel on the levee and floodgate. Here there is a railroad uh, track on top of the tunnel. And we actually have a marker down here. But I thought I'd walk through here with you. You can see where the levee wall can be let down in an event of flooding. I assume all of that equipment still works, but it's probably been a long time since it's been used. You can kind of see that up there. It may not work anymore. I don't know. The big subway gate is the topic of this marker. The big subway gate was constructed in 1914 by stepbrothers of the St. Louis, Missouri. The gate was built on the plan of the Gatam Dam at the Panama Canal and weighs 80 tons. It's 60 feet wide, 25 feet high, and 5 feet thick. The counterweights used to raise and lower the gate weigh almost as much as the gate itself so that it will require only the effort of two men at each windlass at each windlass one windlass on each side of the gate to raise the gate when it had been lowered the cables used in the crabs in raising and lowering the gate are about two inches in thickness 
On August 28, 1914, the Big Flood Gate was given a formal test. Work began on the gate April 29th with the steel work commencing June 27th. The cost of the gate was a little more than $11,000. The gate was completed on August 23rd, 10 days before its scheduled completion date of September 1st, 1914. And let's just uh, get a view of the big subway gate. Now, as I said, I do not know if it is in working condition. Um, I can't tell you when it was last tested. And you can see by the vines grown up there that um, it's probably been some time. So there we go. That is the big subway gate. We are here in Thebes, Illinois to get the old Thebes courthouse. This one says it was placed on the National Register, Register of Historic Places in 1848 and has been restored by the Pulaski Alexander Soil and Water Conservation District. Now there are some things on some um, stones and over here. I'm going to walk around and get so I can back up and get a better view of the building here and then the river there behind. Like they've got an old log house from somewhere. And they have a memorial here to all veterans. Um, it was placed by the Thebes Women's Club. I don't know if there's anything on this stone or not. Oh, yep, yeah, down here. It says it is an original hand-hewn pier block from the Mississippi River Bridge at Thebes, built in 1905. It was recovered from the river in 1990. The block weight is 6,000 pounds. I can believe it. It's pretty big. And there's another view of the Thebes courthouse up there on the hill. Well, guys, you have seen us go back to counties that we have been to, and we have caught up with uh, new markers um, and markers we may have missed along the way. We've been in various counties, so you may find more than one county in an episode it's just us doing some backtracking and catching up and learning some more new stuff i can't believe there's more stuff out there to learn i don't know it all yet <laughs> so stay with us as we continue to not only go to um, new areas and and find markers um, but we get historical markers um, from areas we've already been to and they keep adding them and i i absolutely um, if you know of a place in, one of, in your county that needs to be on our list, let us know and we will do that. So we'll catch up with you later in another episode.